Okay, so I'm stood here, my engine sweater and my Harley jacket, but we're going to talk about Suzuki Hayabusa's. As you know, we are developing a new supercharger kit for the Hayabusa, and customers say to me, what do they have to do to the engine to accept the supercharger? And I have to tell them the details of that. So the first thing my customers ask is, what do they have to do to the engine? Um, and in this case, with, this, with our new kit, we're running up to 18 pound of boost. So that's quite a significant boost and we're getting some serious gains in horsepower. So what we do have to do is one, use the best gas, so 98 octane, 95 octane, Monron average in the US. Um, or if you can use the E85, great, E85 is a fantastic um, fuel for, for giving good horsepower because it cools the charge as well as having a higher octane than any of the other fuels off the pumps. Um, but we still have to drop the compression ratio and dropping the compression ratio, I take for granted what people understand that they know what a compression ratio is. But the majority of bikers probably are not as mechanically minded and technically minded as, as I am. So I thought today I'd show you how a compression ratio is worked out. and. This is what you get from the data from Suzuki, that Gen 2 booster is 12 and a half to one compression ratio. Now compression ratio is, see compression ratio is equal to the swept volume plus the compressed volume divided by the compressed volume. So if this is the bore of the engine, piston at the bottom dead, piston at the top, the swept volume is bottom to top which the maths for it is pi radius squared times stroke. So that's pi times half the bore, times half the bore, plus the stroke. And that equals the swept volume. But the swept volume is that bit. We've still got this bit here. So we know that we've got 12 and a half to one. So the swept volume must be 11 and a half ratio, 11 and a half times what we've got in the top. Uh, the compression ratio is the swept volume plus the compressed volume divided by the compressed volume. The swept volume is piston bottom to the top of its stroke, which on our Hayabusa is, we'll call it in centimeters because we're talking about an engine that is uh, 1340 cc's, which is uh, cubic centimeters so let's do everything in centimeters so the stroke is 6.5 centimeters the bore is 8.1 centimeters so the radius of the bore is 4.05 pi is a constant and that's 3.1415 radius squared so it's 4.05 centimeters times 4.05 centimeters times a stroke which is 6.5 so one cylinder has a swept volume at 334.93 centimeters cubed or cc's. The compressed volume, volume, the part at the top, is the swept volume divided by the ratio less one, because one ratio is in the chamber. So it's 11 and a half to one, sorry, 11 and a half ratios into the swept volume, which comes out at 29.12 centimeters square uh, cubed. So we know how much volume is in the top. We know how much volume is in the swept. So we've got to work out how much bore volume we need in the compressed area, the top there where the piston doesn't go in, compressed volume, how much bigger that's got to be to bring the compression ratio down. So we've decided that putting a two mil spacer under the barrel so down here will increase, obviously the piston won't go up quite so high. The swept volume will stay the same, but it'll be in a slightly different part of the bore. So the swept volume will stay at 334.93, but the compressed volume will be increased because the spacer will lift it away from the piston. So the comp compressed volume was 29.12. We're going to put a two millimeter spacer under the barrel. That doesn't lift the barrel by two millimeters. It only lifts it by 0.18 of a millimeter because we're not going to put the base gasket in, which is 0.2 of, of a centimeter. So, swept volume 
of the spacer, which is a very short height, is pi r squared h, just the same. So pi times the radius, which is the same, times the radius again, which is the same. And then the thickness of the spacer is 0.18 of a centimeter. You multiply that together and you've increased the space above the piston at top of the center by that amount. So it was that, it is now that plus that. So that plus that is your 38.395, which is your compressed volume now because it's gone up from the 29.12. That's your swept volume. So we are swept volume plus compressed volume divided by compressed volume. You've got 334 plus 38 divided by 38. So your compression ratio comes out at 9.72 to 1. So that's the effect of putting a 2 mil spacer underneath the barrel. And 9.72 to 1 gives us the opportunity to run more boost, more ignition timing. And ignition timing is where your power is made. So, you know, if you've got a very high compression ratio, and you've got to pull the timing back to avoid detonation. You, your power is dropping off at the top end. So by Incre uh, decreasing the compression ratio, you can add ignition timing. You're also creating a bit more space for the air to get in. So it's a win-win on that front. So you become much more efficient by dropping the compression ratio. And unlike a turbo, when you drop the compression ratio on a turbocharged bike, then until the, super, uh, until the turbocharger spools up, you're going to have a slower, less powerful engine. With a supercharger, the boost is coming in from idle. So you don't get any lag. You just get an improvement in power all across the board. So it's a really good thing to do and it's not difficult. When we put the space in, we pull the, the engine out, pull the top end, end off the engine, put the space in, put uh, stronger head studs, cometic head gasket, torque it up to 65 foot pound, which is a lot more than uh, the standard head torque. And this helps keep things together and allows you to run more power without blowing the head gasket. So that's how we get to it. Um, there is one other thing that happens. If you put a space under the barrel, the distance between the cams and the crankshaft is increased by that small amount, by the 0.18 of a millimeter. And this has the effect of pulling the cams round. Obviously you've got an inlet cam, an exhaust cam, and then your crankshaft. So cam chain does that around the cam chain tensioner. So this distance here becomes slightly longer. People said to me, why don't you put adjustable cam sprockets on? Well, the, di the amount that we're moving is very little, but what you'll find is that any Hayabusa that has done say 10,000 miles, the cam chain will have stretched quite a lot. So in fact, by putting the spacer under, we're pulling the cam timing back to probably where it was from the factory with the brand new cam chain. I know engine builders will know this, that when you put cams in with a new cam chain and you've got a spacer under the barrel to drop the compression, you have quite a job to get those cams in. They only just go. The cam chain tension is right back and it just about you can just about get it in. But if you've got an engine that you're not replacing the cam chain, then you'll find that the cam's dropping quite easy because the cam chain has stretched quite a lot. And if the cam chain stretched, then the cam timing has gone out by whatever distance is there to there, which probably equates to maybe three or four degrees. So we're, we're actually gaining, gaining that back to more like the factory figure. So it doesn't bother me. The engines run really well uh, without having to bother with the adjustable cam sprockets. Um, so that's a bit of a win as well, unless you put in a new cam chain in, then your timing will be a little bit out, but it still works extremely well. So that's where we are with the engines that we prepare for supercharging. Obviously, you could go um, much further than that. You can chase, uh, change the rods. You can put um, forced induction forged pistons in, but the stock forged pistons and rods are pretty strong. And we've run stock engines just with lower compression ratio for running 350 horsepower plus minus 
and they stay together. It's very rare you get a, a rod thrown at that sort of horsepower. Obviously, if you've got a big turbo or a big supercharger and you're pushing drag racing horsepower figures, five, six, seven hundred horsepower, then you need the strongest parts in there. But for a road use, an occasional drag strip, then just dropping the compression works extremely well and is inexpensive to do. So that's what we've done with the white one that we've been working on. And as you've seen, we've linked up lent on it really hard at uh, the last uh, meeting we were up and down the runway 12, 12 times running almost half a mile flat out and she stayed together completely safe so that gives you an idea how strong a booster engine is uh, without doing a lot to it so there we are <laughs>